Welcome to Blue Marble Geographics, Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Jeff Hatzel. Jeff is a product manager here at the company, and he will be talking to us today about using GeoCalc Online and Global Mapper Mobile in a workflow together. All right, Jeff, take it away. Thanks, Rachel. So as you mentioned, for today's workflow, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of our products um, and using them in conjunction with each other, specifically GeoCalc Online, uh, and Global Mapper Mobile, with a little uh, Global Mapper desktop thrown in there as well. So in this scenario, um, last week I was sent out into the field to update some old survey control points. Uh, the night before I went out, I was emailed a couple new points that I had to update. And um, these old survey markers haven't been updated in quite a long time. So I needed to confirm their location and then I would be updating some information about them as well. However, since it's been a while uh, since these points were surveyed, uh, they were recorded in NAD 27. And of course, all of my current survey equipment is relative to the latest WGS84 uh, or ITRF, however we want to look at it. And so to start, uh, what I'm going to do on GeoCalc Online is first going to use the search tool to populate both my source and my target coordinate systems uh, for my first calculation, which you can see that I'm setting up here. You'll see in a second that overall, this is a two-step process and I'll explain why. Once I have my transformation set up, I'll go ahead and populate my known control point as my source points. Uh, maybe I'll even give it a name here as well. I have already updated one of the points I have, and we'll see that on my map in the moment. So right now I'm going to choose the transformation that I want to use for this particular point. Uh, we're going to do this through NADCON 5. Uh, and then as a result, that original NAD 27 point has been transformed to uh, NAD 83, the 1986 realization. My last step here then is going to be to perform a time-dependent transformation uh, with that NAD83 point that I just calculated to WGS84G1762. Uh, and that's just, a, just the WGS84 realization, uh, which my GPS unit is set to, so that I can find these points easily uh, and accurately and quickly as possible when I'm out in the field since they haven't um, been surveyed in a while. Uh, to do this, I'm going to uh, set up a similar job now, but this time when I select a transformation, uh, I want to use a HTTP transformation or what we call a time-dependent transformation. Jeff, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How come this was a two-step process? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it didn't probably have to be. Um, you know, we could have worked in NAD83 and essentially been close enough. We would have been um, plus or minus about a meter and a half. But since that, uh, I have no idea where these points are. I wanted to try and get as close to their current position as possible. So when I'm matching that to my um, GPS unit in the field, I have as good of an idea uh, of where I should be um, uh, as, as I need, essentially, there. Um, again, that just being because there's a little offset uh, in the original realization of NAD83 back from 1986. So great question. Now that I have my control point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open Global Mapper quickly here. And actually, let's go split screen for a second so that we can see both uh, Global Mapper and GeoCalc Online. You'll see in Global Mapper, I already have my first point uh, added to my reference map here. Now I'm going to use a custom keyboard shortcut in Global Mapper to open uh, the tool that we call our Point at Position tool, which, as you might guess, allows me to quickly create a point at a given coordinate location. So I'm just going to copy over the, the, co the point coordinate from GeoCalc Online and create a new point at this location. You know, one reason we might be doing it this way is that while I'm away from the office, I might not have access to my geographic calculator desktop license. 
Uh, global Mapper doesn't have time-dependent transformations built into it if I happen to have Global Mapper with me, like I do. Um, so this way I can perform all that time-dependent transformation right on the cloud, um, create my point and my base map in Global Mapper, and then send that out to the field for Global Mapper Mobile. Now, as I mentioned, my goal here is to navigate to and then update these points in the field. So before doing so, I'm going to add a feature template to this map so that when I'm in the field, I can ensure that I'm recording uh, the proper information that I need to send back to the office. So this particular feature template uh, will have me record some information about the point itself. I'm going to go ahead then and add it to the map. At this stage, uh, you know, I'll save my workspace just to be safe. And then I'm going through uh, the export process and I'm going to export this map to a global mapper mobile package file, which I will send to my mobile device. Hey, Jeff, just for viewers who might not be familiar, mm -hmm. could you please elaborate on what you mean by sending the map to your mobile device? Sure. So um, anytime we prep a map in Global Mapper Desktop that we're going to be using in Global Mapper Mobile, uh, we need to send what we call a Global Mapper Mobile package file. And you can send that a variety of ways. Uh, you could email it to your mobile device. You could use a file transfer service like Google Drive or Dropbox. I tend to use those often. Um, you can plug your phone in and drag the file over. So a whole bunch of different ways to get that file from uh, desktop to your mobile device. So let's switch over to Global Mapper Mobile here. Oh, and here I am, or I guess I should say here I was, when I was out in the field with Global Mapper Mobile. I should note that I'm working in the pro version of the application here, uh, specifically because I want to look at and use some of the pro functionality, uh, including distance and bearing calculations, as well as using the advanced GPS functionality. Um, Jeff, do you need any cellular data for the connection? Uh, so generally speaking, no. Global Mapper Mobile will function um, more or less without a cellular data connection. Uh, a few exceptions to that might be uh, if you're trying to wirelessly send your GMMP to your device, um, if you're connecting to online data, so if you want to stream a base map, and some other isolated um, functionality like that. But otherwise, all your data can be stored locally and used offline. So after opening the map that I've sent to my device, the first thing I'm going to do here is connect to my external uh, high accuracy GPS unit through the advanced GPS functionality. So this is a device I've already paired with my phone outside of Global Mapper and I can simply connect to it here. Then what I'll do is I'll enable my location display on my map. This will allow me to see my location in relation to the two points of interest. Uh, and I'll zoom in a little bit here so we can see those better. So selecting one of these points will show me the distance that I am from it and at what bearing so that I can navigate to it as I'm out in the field. And as I started to walk towards that first point I have selected here, you'll notice that the distance and bearing are updating as I'm moving. Once I've gotten to the point in the field, um, which again, you know, it may not be exactly where we have it recorded, right? It, it hasn't been updated in a while or surveyed in a long time. So I might be relatively close. Uh, in this case, for this first point, I am. What I'm going to do is create a new point based on my current GPS location and then pop you information about that point uh, into the feature template that I created previously. So using this feature template helps me ensure that I'm populating all the necessary information. Uh, we're, we're talking attribute information and things like that. And you'll see actually that I get auto prompted here as I'm filling this out to make sure that I'm confirming those values properly. So navigating to the second point in the field was admittedly a little trickier. You'll see as I was moving, um, it was not as easily accessible as in a very wet and overgrown area. Uh, so you'll see me, or rather my location, you know, trying to walk to it and kind of walking around it. 
uh, to get as close as I could. Uh, eventually, I, you know, I got to a point where I said, okay, this is as close as I'm going to reasonably get. And then when I was recording my attribute information for that point, I noted that I couldn't get within five meters and that this marker might need some maintenance or, or further work uh, populating those attributes as part of that template. So I can now view just those points on the map if I want. So I've shut off the original point layer. Now I'm looking at just the new points. Uh, I can save my work and then choose to send that information back to the office as and when necessary. Um, again, a similar process, sending it back to the office, same way we discussed, Rachel, um, sending information to Global Mapper Mobile. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff, for walking us through that. For more information on GeoCalc Online, you can visit geocalconline.com today. And for more information on Global Mapper Mobile, please visit the Blue Marble website. Thank you, as always, for joining us for Ask the Experts, and be sure to stay tuned for our next episode.